Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today we're gonna be getting down and dirty, because this video is all about druids and their loving relationship with nature. I'm gonna be giving a rundown of the class, its abilities, and its archetypes, and give general tips on how to be the dirtiest boy that you can be. Keep in mind that this video is directed towards new players who haven't even eaten their first goodberry, and remember, as always, that a lot of this is just my opinion. So feel free to play your trash Santa in whatever way you want, and if you like this video, be sure to leave a comment down below. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So the druid is the mystical protector of nature in all of its forms, from the tiniest little bunny rabbit to the giant shambling mounds and all others in between. This unique connection with the living world is what gives the druid their power that they can then channel into the magic that they perform. Different druids can choose to take on these responsibilities alone or in druidic groups called circles, which are sects of druids that approach their relationship with nature in various different ways. Even if a druid operates alone, every druid still identifies with a specific circle, with the only exception being a new druid that just hasn't advanced to that point yet. In game terms, the circles take the role of archetypes, which a druid gains at second level, and which heavily influence the way that your druid plays. We'll get to archetypes in a minute, but first I want to talk about a druid's role in the overall game at large. See, in a lot of party compositions, druids are very similar to clerics, down to casting a lot of the same spells, and a few of the spells that they don't share even have similar spells in the others list that act as direct analogs to each other, such as the druid's wall of thorns and the cleric's blade barrier. This isn't to say that they do the exact same things, and the comparison isn't meant to be good or bad, it just means that they fill a lot of the same roles in a party. They crowd control, they act as a midline fighter, they grope people with vines, they can heal if they want to, and they've got a lot of good versatility due to the nature huh. of the spells that they know. So you can stick your druid way up into wherever you want them to go, and by the lore, they will fit. And to help them fit wherever they'd like, the druid learns their signature ability at level 2, known as Wild Shape, which lets them take the form of a beast that they've seen before. You can only use this ability twice per short rest, they specifically have to be beast creatures, and they start out pretty weak, only letting you shift into creatures of challenge rating 1 fourth or less, and also not letting you turn into anything with a swimming or flying speed, but as you advance through the class, the challenge rating raises from 1 half and then to 1, while the movement penalties also fall off. First the swimming restriction, and then the flying one. Eventually, you'll be so in tune with your beast form that you'll be able to cast spells while transformed, and your aging rate will also start to slow down about one year per decade, and finally, you'll be able to change shape at will as well as cast magic without any of its components unless the material components cost money. So you get to be Hohenheim from Full Metal Alchemist. All this means is that with enough time, your druid will grow big enough to make like a tree and beat the leaf out of people. Now on to archetypes. Unfortunately, the druid has a pitiful amount of choices, with only four druidic circles to pick from. This is the lowest amount of any class, and it's really disappointing because the druid has a lot of potential to do some really different and crazy things. Luckily, the archetypes that the druid does have are all pretty great, and if the current Unearthed Arcanas are anything to go by, this class will be getting at least one more sick circle in the distant future. To start with, we have the Land Druid, which focuses on the magical side of our favorite bushy boy and pushes it to its limit. You gain a bonus cantrip, you recover a small amount of spells on a short rest, and you select a specific type of land, be it Arctic, Coast, Desert, Forest, Grassland, Mountain, Swamp, or the Underdark, and then you gain spells as you go that tie you to that specific type of land. This land that you chose is representative of where you trained to become a druid, so the spells feel like an extension of your training and a connection to your backstory, which is super dope. If I'm being honest, this is more along the lines of what I wish the Ranger would look like, as in you gain abilities that are decided by whichever type of land you chose and your abilities are reflective of the type of ranger you are, but I digress. In addition, you gain land stride, which lets you move through non-magical difficult terrain unimpeded, and plants won't slow you down or harm you even if they have vines or thorns. By 10th level, you become immune to poison and disease, as well as you gain an immunity to charms caused by elementals or fey. And finally, beasts and plants will think twice before attacking you. Literally, that's the ability. Maybe the bear doesn't actually know whether or not you touch at his spaghetti. In any case, this archetype is a great traditional class for anybody looking to increase their magical power and overall druidity. On the dark side, the moon circle is for druids who want to take wild shape to its maximum potential. To start with, you can take wild shape as a bonus action to get yourself in the fight faster, and while you're transformed, you can burn spell slots to heal yourself. Already, this archetype is taking a more direct, hands-on approach to playing your war squirrel, and it only gets crazier from there. Remember how the normal druid can only transform into a challenge rating one animal midway through the game? The moon druid doesn't, because you can do it at level three, and and the challenge rating increases by one every three levels. Dire Squirrel. As you go on, your beast attacks become magical, and you can change not just into beasts, but into elementals as well, becoming a raw force of nature that tells city folk to go forest themselves. Lastly, you gain the power to use the spell Alter Self whenever you'd like, so you truly become able to shape your body however you please. With so much animalistic power given to you, the circle is a perfect choice for any character that wishes to become Lord Commander of the Furries. So, druids are the ancient protectors of nature in all its forms, but most people stop just short of understanding what that really means. Druids of the Circle of Dreams are the ones that take that last step into understanding the true scope of their role in the world, and that step takes them directly into the Feywild, as these druids protect not only the world of the material realm, but the realm of the fairies as well. The Circle of Dreams druid is the intermediary between the Feywild and the material plane, and as a result, their circle-specific abilities represent the different fairy courts of Fey society. To start with, Dream Druids gain a pool of d6s for each level they have in Druid, and they can use these dice to heal party members from up to 120 feet away. This represents the light of the Summer Court, and you regain the dice after a long rest. 
Speaking of long rest, your next ability protects you as you rest by creating a bubble of magic that hides anybody inside it and helps them see outside of it. The bubble lasts for as long as you rest, and it represents the shadowy, gleaming court of fairies. After that, you can teleport you or an ally a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, and finally, you can cast Dream, Scry, or Teleportation Circle at the end of a short rest, with a Teleportation Circle being special in that it specifically teleports you to the last place that you spent a long rest, making it a great escape plan if you find yourself locked in a dungeon with no way out. All in all, I really like the Circle of Dreams, as it brings a lot of new ideas and abilities to the Druid that you just wouldn't normally think of, and they're all pretty fun to play with. Just do your best not to fall in too deeply with Fae Society, lest you go the way of the Kender. Finally, we have the fourth Circle of the Druids, the Circle of Shepherds, which, despite the name being very obvious about what the class is and does, still takes a few seconds to actually wrap your head around. Druids of the Circle of the Shepherd take an extreme interest in defending the forces of living nature, from the beasts that grew up in it to the nature fairies that inhabit it, and act as a big brother of the bears that would otherwise have a hard time defending themselves from the douchebags with arrows. As a result, Shepherds learn how to speak Sylvan, and they can communicate with beasts and fairies. You can also summon the spirit totem of either a bear, a hawk, or a unicorn to aid you in your journey, with the bear granting temporary hit points, the hawk helping you hit your attacks, and the unicorn both helping spot people, although I would think that the hawk would be the one to do that, and also healing everyone around it whenever you cast a healing spell. Afterwards, any beasts and fae that you summon become more powerful, gaining temporary hit points and having magical attacks, and later, when they end their turn near your spirit totem, they regain hit points equal to half your druid level. Finally, as your last resort, if you get reduced to zero hit points or you're incapacitated, the effects of the spell Conjure Animals immediately activates as if it were casted using a ninth level spell slot. Basically, you've become such a good friends with the animals that they will magically rush to your aid when you are defeated, protecting your body as the Cuckoo Revenge Squad flocks in to peck the shit out of whoever fucked with their favorite fowl. With all of these abilities, the Shepherd Circle is the absolute summoning powerhouse of the druids, and once again, it's one of my favorite druid archetypes to play, especially with the last ability. Nothing is more satisfying than the DM thinking that they've finally taken down the party healer, only for him to scream in terror as a giant swarm of bees emerges from my body. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like and a comment if you did, and maybe subscribe if you want to be a cool dude. Also, if you want to stay up to date on all of your Davy news, I leave a link to my Discord in the description below. But yeah, Davy out.